a man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by John. Welcome to the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, where a sellout crowd of more than 17,000 is on hand to watch the ACC semifinals, opening with defending national champion North Carolina against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. North Carolina State won its 18th game yesterday, coming off the ropes against Wake Forest. The Deacons were playing for the last shot when Sidney Lowe made his biggest steal of the season. Then Lorenzo Charles took the spotlight at the free throw line and after missing one, hit the game winner for a 71-70 victory that pushed the Wolf back into the second round. It was a much easier opener for top-seeded North Carolina. The defending national champions broke open their match with Clemson and won going away. The extraordinary Michael Jordan had another All-American day, 28 points and 10 rebounds. But the key may have been senior Matt Doherty. He took up the scoring slack in the absence of Sam Perkins with a career-high 28 points and hit 10 of 15 shots from the floor. The last time these teams met, North Carolina State pulled out a 70-63 win in Raleigh that set off a wild celebration. And they won that one without Derek Wittenberg, but he's back as the Wolfpack's leading scorer. For Carolina, the major question mark is Sam Perkins and his availability. It's Jim Valvano against Dean Smith in the rubber match. The ACC semifinals, North Carolina State against North Carolina. The scene is Atlanta, Georgia, and eight teams have come here with a dream, an ACC championship. More than 17,000 fans decked out in every conceivable color and costume for one of the greatest shows in all of sports. It's a combination of the expected and the unbelievable favorites and underdog. It is the 1983 Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Good afternoon from the Omni in Atlanta, North Carolina against North Carolina State. Hello everybody, this is Mike Patrick along with Jeff Mullins for what should be a great ball game. And Jeff, the one question on everybody's mind, certainly Carolina fans, what about Sam Perkins? Well, Sam Perkins was told to warm up very hard today, and we just this second learned that Sam will start today. Of course, that will not catch Coach Jim Valvano of State by surprise, because I talked to him yesterday, and he said, believe me, Sam Perkins will be out there, and we're preparing just like he would be. North Carolina has always had the kind of players that come through in the clutch. They showed it again yesterday. Mike, when people ask me to evaluate players, I right away look at how do they do in the big games and what are their one-loss record. And yesterday we saw Matt Doherty and Michael Jordan come through when their team needed them. When they knew they had to dig a little deeper, they came through with the big performance. That's the kind of character they have. This is a rematch, of course, of last year, but a very vital game for North Carolina State to make the NCAA. Yes, it is. Last year they met in the semifinals, but this is a different state team this year. They have more experience, led by seniors. They're going to be ready today to rival the UNC North Carolina Tar Heels. And we'll be back with the starting lineups for today's game right after this message. You know, Sam Perkins was obviously missed yesterday, but the rest of the Tar Heels made up for it. But I really think he was missed, most importantly, on defense, because Raymond Jones for Clemson had a career-high 27 points. Now translate that to today's game, and all of a sudden, Sam Perkins is out there guarding Thurl Bailey. And that may be a key defensive factor in the game. Who also had a big game yesterday. Thurl Bailey, I think, had one of his finest performances in a pressure situation. Doherty gets the tip, but North Carolina State controls. This is Sidney Lowe to Wittenberg. He's got Michael Jordan on him. What a great matchup that is. And there are 41 against 41. Lorenzo Charles. Stripped by Doherty as he went up. He was double teamed. Lorenzo Charles, of course, hit the game winner yesterday. Well, we've said it time and time again, Lorenzo Charles, the improvement he's made in the last month. But you can see it there. He didn't dribble the ball before. He just turned around and shot. That time he was ready to make a good move. Carolina was called for the foul. Foul was on Jordan last year 
North Carolina beat North Carolina State by a dozen in the semifinals of the same tournament. Non-shooting foul, so State will inbound. Wittenberg. Perkins coming way out on Bailey when he has the ball. Carolina going man-to-man -man opening minute. Tipped away by Jordan, stolen by Braddock. Four on two break. Perkins. Tipped out of bounds. Foul on Matt Doherty. Second team foul against Carolina. I'm sure Sam Perkins would have liked to see that first shot go in. Yes, that would have given him a lift. I watched him in warm-ups, and he, he seemed to have good rhythm on his shot, but you wonder, is he jumping normally? You know, with a sore foot, you favor it a little bit. That can really throw your shot off. Sidney Lowe to Wittenberg, who has not taken a shot yet. Moving on Jordan. Got by him, then it was blocked by Brad Darty. Here comes Braddock. Looks for Matt Darty, who had a career-high 28 yesterday. Darty in the lane, fouled by Thurl Bailey. I don't know if that was a mismatch or a mistake on defense. Thurl Bailey normally guards Sam Perkins. That time he had Doherty inside. Good pass by Perkins inside. Excellent position by Doherty. Bailey fouls him, trying to block the shot. First foul against North Carolina State. And Brad Doherty, a 67% shooter to the line. He hits two out of three on the season. Averaging almost eight points a game, and you can see the improvement in that young man over the year, Jeff. Yes, can you imagine the pressure, too, on a freshman starting an ACC semifinal contest? I know he's feeling it out there. First two points of the ball game, and North Carolina leads NC State two to nothing. Low against Braddock in the backcourt. That's a fine matchup. Jimmy Braddock, fine ball handling guard. Sidney Low, all conference this year. Hey, there aren't any losers on that court. Not going to find anybody isn't a great athlete. Fine move by Lowe. Shot wouldn't go. Charles, tough underneath. For the third time, Lorenzo Charles blocked and finally fouled. Three offensive rebounds for Lorenzo Charles. And that's, that's great athletic ability, but it's also confidence. He's learned that he can go up with anybody. Perkins, Doherty all around. He keeps the ball alive. This is a one-man rebound show. He goes again, and he knows that he can get it back and put it in that hole. He'll go to the line for two free throws. Fouls on Perkins. Lorenzo Charles goes to the free throw line. He only hits two out of three on the year. A little under the average, but the one he made yesterday will live with him for a long, long time. Threw up the first in a 70-70 tie against Wake Forest. Not the best looking shot you ever saw. Clanked off the front of the rim, but he buried the one that meant it. Hits this one. He told us, Jeff, he was just, just checking it out on the first shot. Just checking the windage on the first shot. Right. He was getting serious on the second one. It's 2-2. 18-30 to go. Doherty, three-point range, it won't go. Sidney Low. Carolina quickly back on defense. Low puts NC State on top, 4-2. To Their first lead, a minute 45 into the ball game. And that's a shot that Sidney Lowe wouldn't have taken earlier. He pulled up for the fast break. When Wittenberg went out, he started looking for that shot. Now he's got confidence in it. There's Michael Jordan with his first handling of the ball. It won't drop from three-point range. And good defense by Perkins. Charles tried the outlet pass to Wittenberg. And Sam just reached the hand out and knocked it out of bounds. 4-2, North Carolina State. North Carolina started in a man-to-man -man defense, but they backed into the zone this time. 1-3-1 one, one zone with Jimmy Braddock at the point. Wittenberg. They just tossing it around the perimeter. McQueen, Thurl Bailey, three-point effort. Got it. I think Thurl Bailey is really a street shooter, and when he fit, hits his first one like that, it seems to lift his confidence. Thurl Bailey has tried 11 three-pointers this year. He has made eight of them. The foul is on Derek Wittenberg, trying to prevent Jordan from getting the basketball. And Jeff, when you've got a guy that's 6'11", that makes eight out of 11 three-pointers, you have some. This is a strategy we might look for. Michael Jordan, using his height advantage, posting up with Derek Wittenberg. Wittenberg got one foul. Will they go back to it, try and get Wittenberg in foul trouble, get him out of the game? Let's look for it. It is 7-2, North Carolina State. Perkins misses the jump hook, but Darty tipped it in. Brad Darty, the freshman from Black Mountain, North Carolina, has four. Watch Michael Jordan, his defensive stance. He almost looks like he's gonna getting ready for karate. That's right. But he's ready, and I know that's got to worry Derek Wittenberg. Those long arms, great jumping ability. 
Wittenberg behind the screen to low for another three-point effort. Won't go. Charles kept it alive, but Jordan gets the rebound. Jordan from a guard spot, averaging almost six rebounds a game. Perkins with that patented jump hook. Won't go again. And here comes the break. Three on two. Low to Wittenberg. Derek Wittenberg scores for the first time, and it's 9-4. Nobody engineers the fast break any better than Sidney Lowe. Three on two that time. Dished off a nice pass to his teammate, Derek Wittenberg. Nice inside move by Wittenberg. Perkins misses his shot. He is 0 for 4. The outlet to Lowe. Another three on two. Here's Wittenberg. Bailey with a rebound. Stripped by Braddock. The ball goes to Doherty and back to Braddock. Got Matt Doherty on the right wing. Yes. 9-6. Nice inside move by Matt Doherty that time. He's never in a hurry. Made a good, deliberate fake. Got Charles off his feet. Watch him show the ball. Gets the defender up in the air. Then he has all the time in the world to measure it. He buries it. Curtis Hunter is in the ball game for North Carolina. Jordan is out. And Hunter will guard Wittenberg. Bailey. Sam Perkins all over Thurl Bailey. Sidney Lowe open. There's Thurl Bailey with a look at it. Long range. Bingo for Thurl Bailey. He has five. And it's 11 to 6. North Carolina State. Played a little over four minutes. First game of the semifinals. ACC in Atlanta, Georgia. Hunter. Dean Smith put Hunter in for Michael Jordan. Coach Smith knows probably better than anyone the first couple minutes of the game you really burn it out and it's a time you can really get tired. He wants to get Jordan a blow. Low three-point effort and Sidney hustles to the baseline to get it and Bailey put it in. Great effort from Sidney Lowe first to get the ball and then to get it to throw. Bailey. He's really looking for the outside shot. That time it didn't go but he stayed after it. Made a nice inside pass to Bailey and Sidney, I mean, Thurl is certainly off to a good start. Hunter with a double clutch. Doherty, foul, and he made the bucket. Excellent inside move by Matt Doherty. Got the defender up in the air again, but even at that, Bailey had a hand on the ball. Watch this. No, he actually got under the defense, put it up with his left hand, three-point basket, big play. Jordan checks back in, Hunter is out, and Doherty will go to the free-throw line, chance to get a three-point play. He has four already, had a career-high 28 yesterday. So did Michael Jordan. Doherty, just a solid ball player. Completes the three-pointer. And we have a timeout. We have a timeout on the court. 14.54 to go first half. North Carolina State 13, North Carolina 9. And we'll be back after this message. North Carolina State 13, North Carolina 9. 14.54 to go in the first half. And North Carolina State has been able to get the tempo going to their liking. They love to run, I think, because Sidney Lowe does it so well. And North Carolina has missed some shots. Sam Perkins 0 for 4 so far. State doing a good job of giving them only one shot at the basket till that last basket by uh, Matt Doherty. But uh, Thurl Bailey off to an excellent start. Interesting matchup to watch. This There's is that the great, pass from Lowe. Great pass from Sidney Lowe. He has such court awareness. He knew exactly where his teammate was, laid it in there softly. Good pass. 13-9, North Carolina State by four. <laughs> Out of bounds. It's going to be to North Carolina. First, the referee on the spot said state basketball, and Michael Jordan said no way, but he reversed it, and he's right. It was off Derek Wittenberg. Excellent defense after the timeout by North Carolina. Doherty. Perkins in the middle of that zone to Matt Doherty. Out of Brad Doherty. Braddock. Double pump by Braddock. Jimmy. Jimmy Braddock will get into the core of that defense. That time he went in under everybody, went up, used the board very nicely for an easy two-pointer. Hits almost half of his shots all year long. 
averaging almost 10 points a game, and he has his club back within two. Number 25 for State, Derek Wittenberg has been very quiet. Let's give credit to Michael Jordan, because he's all over him with those long arms. Thurl Bailey, guarded by Perkins. Bailey has not been quiet. He's been outstanding. There's Wittenberg, a rainbow. Braddock. Talk about a guy who can run a fast break. Low to Doherty. Got the roll. And we're tied at 13. Carolina fights back six points for Brad Doherty so far. He's made his presence felt inside, getting an offensive rebound, that time a basket, getting to the free throw line. Lorenzo Charles to low. Bailey and Perkins come out high. Low to Wittenberg. Low to Lorenzo Charles, rather. Sidney Lowe, five seconds left on the shot clock. And a three-pointer for Sidney Lowe. Five on the afternoon. Nice punch-out pass by Lorenzo Charles that time. He took it down low. Really wasn't open. Punched it out to his teammate Lowe for the three-point basket. He was double-teamed, and he found the man that was open. Perkins with a jump hook, and Sam Perkins has his first two. 16-15, state by one. You're not going to shake Sam Perkins confident. He's been around too long. That was probably the most difficult shot he's had to take. Baseline jump hooker, but it went in anyway. Wittenberg to Bailey. Charles, triple team, blocked by Brad Doherty out of bounds. Warren Martin comes in for North Carolina. You've got Terry Gannon and Ernie Myers checking in for North Carolina State. And Gannon is the zone buster. Yes, he is, and he's been on a tear lately. He'll have Michael Jordan all over him, though. North Keep Carolina pressuring a little more on defense, trying to double team. Keep an eye on the shot clock, lower right-hand corner of your screen. It's not been a factor in this tournament yet. Myers, air ball. Jim Valvano stands, gives him a hand, says, don't worry about it. That's a difficult time to come in shooting. Usually you like to run up and down the court at least once, get your rhythm. But that time he was so open, he had to take the shot. It obviously didn't come close. Perkins to Doherty. Low to Martin. Martin getting pretty good position in the middle of that zone inside. Shot clock is at six seconds. Braddock trying to go by Gannon. Down to three. Perkins at two. Bailey with a rebound, and Michael Jordan just took it out of his hand. He can just turn a game around all by himself. Braddock, this is Perkins. Warren Martin, Perkins again. And Thurl Bailey finally does it. North Carolina must have had a shot at that bucket for a full 20 seconds. They had about four shots that time, and I watched Thurl Bailey come back to the basket from the free throw line and finally said, hey, I'm going to get this one. And, and Sidney Lowell buries a three-pointer at the other end. It's 19 to 15. I'll tell you, Sidney's the guy that's carried this team, particularly when Wittenberg was out. A lot of teams can't tell Derek and Sidney apart. I think Sidney feels like Derek today, the way he's shooting that three-pointer. Perkins had the ball knocked away by Thurl Bailey. State with a four-on-two break. And Lowe with a rare bam pass, intercepted by Michael Jordan. In and out for Jordan. And Lowe with a rebound and elbow Terry Gannon, his own teammate. You know, there's a guy in the stands here today, the only other guy I know that can make a steal like Michael Jordan just did, Jerry West. With those great long arms, getting him in the passing lane. Foul inside, I think, by Warren Martin. Foul, Warren Martin. There is a timeout on the court. 10 minutes, 42 seconds left to go. First half, North Carolina State 19, North Carolina 15. We'll be back after this. People from all over the country want to see this tournament, and there is one of the greatest players that ever lived, Jerry West, former Laker out of West Virginia. He's sitting beside Rod Thorne, another player who wore 44 at West Virginia. Then you wore 44, Jeff Mullins. I think you three guys could still go out there and give these kids a run for it. You played against Jerry West for a long time. Yes, I did, and he and Michael Jordan make the game about as easy as any two guys I know. But I was kidding, Gary and Rod, all they need is Hot Rod Hunley here tonight, and they have a threesome. <laughs> The story goes, you know, when Jerry was recruited at West Virginia, Hot Rod 
showed him around and showed him the new gymnasium and said, see that gym? I built that. And Jerry says, well, yeah, I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> Apocryphal, maybe, but good <laughs> nonetheless. 10.42 to go, first half. North Carolina State 19, North Carolina 15. That's Gannon. Being guarded by Curtis Hunter. State with a hot hand early. Carolina hitting only a third of its shot. Gannon doesn't go inside very often. Got the good pass to McQueen, and Kozell McQueen misses his first shot. Steve Hale into the ball game. Working with Hunter in the backcourt. So Dean Smith going deep into his bench. North Carolina State with a very small lineup now. Ernie Myers at forward, Thurl Bailey out of the game, as is Derek Whitford. Hunter misses a shot, and Martin with a rebound. Warren Martin, who did a great job yesterday, had 11 boards. Jim Balvano has to be concerned with the number of offensive rebounds North Carolina's been getting early. Warren Martin with a nice move inside. And he's bringing some of the confidence from yesterday's game into today's action. Carolina closes within two. It's 19 to 17. Myers looking low for Lorenzo Charles. Leans in, and the foul is going to be called on Doherty. And here comes uh, another wave of substitutions. Braddock and Jordan back in for Carolina. Classic Ernie Myers move. Isolated one on one, a little spin dribble. Watch him jump in. Contact, he initiates a lot of that contact. I think he got a break that time. Foul called on Matt Doherty. Myers goes to the free throw line as Carolina commits its fifth personal foul. North Carolina State guilty of only three so far. Myers struggling a little at the free throw line. 61%. Didn't get that one. The ball didn't even leave his hand with good rotation. It's kind of slipping out of his hands. He lost some of that shooting rhythm he had earlier. Free throw. Bounces hard off the rim this time, and here comes Braddock on the run. Carolina could tie. Warren Martin over McQueen. Almost missed the jam, but we're tied at 19. That's what he calls his slam spin shot. <laughs> Practice that one five, six times a day. Tied at 19. Nine minutes, 10 seconds to go, first half. Low. Nice penetrating move, drew the foul. Sidney Lowe sees the seam and he takes it. We talked about the experience of NC State. Wittenberg, Bailey, and Lowe, but Lowe has taken over the offense early in this game. Sam Perkins comes back in, and Sidney Lowe with eight points will go to the free throw line. 9.06 left, first half. We're tied at 19. Foul was called against Braddock. That's his first. The sixth team foul against Carolina. One more and State will be in the bonus. Lowe gets his ninth. Sidney Lowe has an interesting stance on the free throw line, kind of turns side saddle to the basket, but watch how he lines his feet up on the, on the line, gets as close as he can. Good rhythm, good concentration. He doesn't shoot till he's ready to shoot. 21-19, State by a pair over Carolina. Rematch, one of the fine traditions anywhere in athletics. North Carolina against North Carolina State. Braddock. Jeff, North Carolina's been able to get inside that zone very well, just like that. I think NC State would prefer to play a man-to-man. -man. They're just trying to mix it up a little bit. That time they had a missed assignment. Doherty got open underneath. Carolina searches the defense so well. Nice bounce pass. Good handling of the basketball by Doherty because that pass didn't come up. Came only about knee high, but he got down low to get it. A lot of big guys have trouble with that. Foul was on Lorenzo Charles, and Brad Doherty scored. Doherty with the next one could tie it up again. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if this seesaw is all the way back and forth to the buzzer. In and out this time, and McQueen skies a rebound. Should be interesting if it does go down to the buzzer. You know, most ACC fans at other schools think Carolina gets all the breaks. NC State is kind of thinking this is their year to get the breaks. They both should play with a lot of confidence down the stretch. Kozell McQueen missed a shot, got the rebound, missed a shot again, wanted a foul, didn't get that. Perkins, three-pointer. From the top of the circle, he's shown he can be a deadly shooter, and Carolina takes the lead. That brought the Tar Heel crowd to life. 
They want to see Sam is back, and that three-pointer shows he's ready to play. Shooting nearly 50% from 20 feet or better this year. Lowe and Wittenberg. Wittenberg now matched against Braddock. Bailey. Perkins all over him in the corner to Lowe. They switched Jordan to him, and Lowe had the shot blocked by Brad Doherty. Here's Braddock against Wittenberg. And Jimmy Braddock will score. That's a good defensive change, possibly. Lowe was hot, so they've got Jordan on it. Well, I don't know whether that was a switch or a mismatch, but Jimmy Braddock did an excellent job of protecting the basketball on that drive. Timeout with 7.38 to go first half. North Carolina 25, North Carolina State 21. Don't go away. North Carolina has grabbed the momentum away from North Carolina State and now leads at 25 to 21. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. Jeff, let's take a look at what happened to Sidney Lowe. Sidney Lowe was furious after this basket. He drove the lane, got around Jordan, threw it up. Was some contact down low, but it, that block started the fast break at the other end. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Atlantic Coast Conference and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this game without the expressed written consent of the Atlantic Coast Conference is strictly prohibited. State will have the ball. Carolina appears to be ready to give them that full court blitz. After every timeout, Carolina has come with the full court pressure. Last time they got a turnover, but NC State handled it better this time. Wittenberg and Lowe, who have been in the backcourt together seemingly forever. Been a little quiet lately. Cozell McQueen to Wittenberg against Jordan. Now Jordan back on him this time. And Lowe got free. Sydney Lowe. That's exactly the opposite of the way Lowe and Wittenberg used to play. Sydney used to drive, punch out to Wittenberg. That time Wittenberg went to the hoop, punched it out to Sydney. His newfound confidence, he put it in. Jordan misses the three point shot. Lowe already has 10 points in the first half. 10 of State's 23, and they are down by two. And now Jordan will switch back to Sydney Lowe, and Braddock will take Wittenberg, three pointer, and Perkins with a rebound. Braddock hustles it to Jordan. And Braddock will set up the offense. Doherty, who's been quiet so far, to Jordan. Brad Doherty, little short, Earl Bailey with a good rebound. The intensity seems to have died off just a little bit after that opening frenzy. Well, that's very normal, and yet you can see either team might try and up the defensive tempo. There's Derek Wittenberg. He needs one to get off the get off the snide, as the players say. He hasn't hit one yet. Doherty pulls up for the jumper and put it down. Matt Doherty releasing the ball as he did all day yesterday. Great rotation on the ball. Really flipped it at the basket. Great deal of confidence on that shot. Big roar you heard from the crowd. They put that basket up for North Carolina State and show them tied. And now they show them with the lead when it's actually 27-23 North Carolina. They've got a 27-25 NC State up on the board. <laughs> Lorenzo Charles with a power move. Brad Doherty was right there to try and block it, but Lorenzo Charles just kept going up and finally lofted it over his outstretched hand. Now they corrected the scoreboard, and it's Carolina 27, State 25. Perkins in the middle of that zone. Brad Doherty. Perkins got it. And a foul away from the ball. Michael Jordan called for the foul. The way he knifes to the offensive boards, he got called for coming over the back. We saw that feathery touch of Sam Perkins that time. Picked one up very early in the ballgame. And let's see who goes to the stripe. They'll put Lorenzo Charles up there, who hit his first two this afternoon and has four points. 5.06 left, first half. Carolina by four. Charles on the one and one. Not look like somebody who has had trouble off and on from the free throw line. He's got his rhythm going right now. Well, I think not only has his offensive game come along the last part of the season, but his free throw shooting has. And let's give him credit. He doesn't have a great touch, but he concentrates, takes his time on the line. Yesterday he went under a pressure situation. Look at that concentration. 
he's got good rotation on the basketball. Nice release. 29-27. Sam Perkins out of the ball game. Perkins showed no ill effects of that bad toe, Jeff. I thought he moved very well. Braddock got low in the air, then dishes to Doherty. He was just inside the three-point lane and comes up short. Gannon, three-pointer. Boy, he can fill it up. He didn't hesitate that time. Wingman on the three-on-two break. He pulled up for the three-pointer. He just loves the outside shot. And all at once, North Carolina State has scored five points in a row. They have the lead back, and Warren Martin has called for an offensive foul at the baseline. Michael Jordan threw it into Martin twice. Second time he tried to go to the hoop. Kozel McQueen was there. The contact, the foul on Warren Martin. Dean Smith calling out instructions to his club. He's telling Warren Martin he wants him on Thurl Bailey. And here comes Alvin Battle into the ball game for North Carolina State. Uh, Dean Smith has used a lot more players early than Jim Valvano has for State. Yes, he has, and that's not to go unexpected. You know, Jim was quoted as saying, when Sidney Lowe asked for a rest, he said he's going to get it when his eligibility's up, <laughs> not before. Thurl Bailey got Martin in the air and scored, and it's now 32-29. That is nine points for Thurl Bailey. Back-to-back, -back, big games on offense for him. And that was a confidence move that time. Warren Martin switched off on him, and Thurl said, I think I can beat Warren Martin. Took the ball to the hoop. He very seldom dribbles, made a nice move in the basket. Matt Doherty. Pass knocked loose. Jordan has it. Nice baseline yes. drive by Jordan. He missed the shot. Now they're going to call Thurl Bailey for the foul. Jordan just glides. Thurl Bailey glides too, but he doesn't quite glide enough. Here he came over to help out. Michael Jordan goes to the hoop, missed the basketball. It looks like he got Jordan in the face. Although I couldn't see the contact, I saw some up around the basketball. Thurl Bailey will have to sit down with his third personal foul. McQueen comes back in. So they've got Lorenzo Charles up front with Battle and McQueen for State. And Jordan will go to the free throw line. You know, he was almost ignored yesterday with 28 points, 10 rebounds, couple of blocks, a few steals, some assists. And everybody wanted to talk about Matt Doherty. <laughs> well, Matt had his career high, and we did do a lot of talking about him, and we kind of expect that from Michael That's Jordan. Right. You know, this state lineup, it's going to be real interesting. Probably they'll do just the opposite, but I think this is a tough lineup for state to play with in a big game. They do not have an outside shooter on their front line. Lorenzo Charles, Kozel McQueen, and Battle cannot shoot it from the outside. Timeout with North Carolina State leading North Carolina by one. This is the Raycom Jefferson Production Sports Network. Three minutes, 54 seconds left to go in the first half of North Carolina State on top of North Carolina, 32 to 31. And again, the three-point shot has played uh, a real role in here. State was down by four, he hit a regular field goal, and then a three-pointer to get the lead. They hit another three-pointer after that. Yes, they did. And uh, it's amazing how great players will neutralize each other. Michael Jordan just got his first two points of the game. Derek Wittenberg with only one field goal. Both players expending a lot of energy guarding each other. And it certainly has a factor on your offensive end, although both of them are very explosive. I mentioned about State's lineup now. They don't have any outside shooters. That's not a derogatory comment. Kozel McQueen's good inside near the basket. Charles, right. Charles is good around the basket. They just are not good perimeter shooters. It makes it a little easier on the North Carolina defense. They don't have to come out and challenge State's front line right now. John Madrid gives us the stats on the three-point shot so far. State, four out of 10. North Carolina, normally an excellent long-range shooting team, just one out of six so far. Lowe and Gannon are the guards. There's nobody around that's better than Gannon on those bombs. Only seven seconds left on the clock. Great inside move by Sidney Lowe. Made it directly on Michael Jordan, penetrated to the hoop, and put it in. Lowe already has a dozen. State, 34. Carolina, 31. Jordan in the middle of that lane. Great arching shot, but it won't go. And here is Lowe hustling into the corner for the rebound. 
Sidney Lowe, who only averages 11 and a half points a game, already has 12. But as Jeff told you earlier, when Wittenberg was out, he assumed more of the offensive load, so his average has been going up all season. And you know, NC State is really using some clock now. Without the shooters, without Bailey and Wittenberg in there, they're trying to use some clock. Last time, Sidney finally went one on one to the basket. Gets it to Lorenzo Charles, and Charles barely got it off before the 30 second shot. Came up with a jump hook, hit the air ball. Hale is in there. That shot was blocked by Doherty. That was his fourth block shot of the half. Hale looks for Jordan, can't find him, and goes back out to Sam Burke. Shot clock is at 13, and the jumper by Michael Jordan, a three pointer. And we have another tie, 34 all. Can't keep him quiet forever. No, no way. Five points for Jordan. Low calling out signals to his teammates. Lorenzo Charles loves the power move. Got the tip. He just likes to get it on the glass and then go after it. We've seen him do it twice. That time he tipped it back in. Not the biggest guy at 6'7", but he is tough inside. And he Rejection and Lowe tries to lay it up. Missed the shot, and they'll call Sidney Lowe for the offensive foul against Steve Hale. What a block by Battle. Watch this pass into Doherty. Here comes Battle. He's got to wind up in a step, swats the ball away. Sidney Lowe, very seldom that you can draw the charge. Steve Hale, give him credit. Got good position, anticipated right. Excellent call by the official. Those guys went down hard. We have seen Steve Hale do that several times this year. He seems to have that ability to turn, square his shoulders, and just flat stop. And when you're back one-on-one -on -one like that, you can only guess. He has great anticipation. Guess that one perfectly. Our game has been tied four times. The lead is switched back and forth. Exum into the ball game. Feeds it low to Brad Doherty against McQueen, and he scores. Carolina has tied it for the fifth time. 36 all with 120 to go. That's nine points for Brad Doherty. Doing a good job inside. All of his points coming around the basket. McQueen against Doherty. Roselle doesn't often look for the shot and didn't that time. Battle picked up his dribble. Low to Cozell McQueen. He'll try to put it up over Doherty. Missed the shot. Kept it alive. And they knock it outside to Cannon. Low gets the loose ball. Very wisely, still 23 seconds left on the clock, 48 seconds left in the half. Low brings the ball out. They want to use some clock, run their offense. 40 seconds left in the half, 12 seconds now on the shot clock. Jumper good, Sidney Low. 15 points in the first half. 39-36, state by three. The picture you see on your screen is the game clock. The shot clock is three seconds less than that. Jimmy Braddock answers in a hurry. You see two senior ball players, Braddock and Lowe, who can lead their team, and they did it that time with consecutive three-point baskets. Lowe down the lane with six seconds left, and he draws the foul. On who? Is it uh, Hunter? On Curtis Hunter. Freshman doing a good job defensively, but there's no way, not having played against Sidney Lowe before, that he can stay one on one with Sidney Lowe. That is number one on Hunter. Lowe will go to the line. Let's see if he'll get the one and one or if they give him a two shot foul. Sidney Lowe on line for. We're tied again at 39. Only five seconds left in the first half, and it is the one and one. Low, a 75% shooter on the season. Already has 15 points first half. He's carried the load. Give him 16. And this is very important because Wittenberg is on the bench. Thurl Bailey is on the bench. And outside of Gannon's long range shots, he is really the only offensive weapon they have. The only offensive threat outside of about 10 feet. 40 to 39. State by a point. 41 to 39. Carolina will try to get the last shot of the half. This is Exum. We're down to three. Long range by Perkins, doesn't go, and North Carolina State will leave the Omni floor with a 41-39 first half lead. Your impression of the first half? Well, I have to give great credit to Jim Balvano. Bailey picked up his third foul. Wittenberg was on the bench, and he slowed the ball down within the framework of the 30-second clock. 
kind of like Georgia Tech did last night against Maryland. Used a lot of the clock, controlled the last three minutes of the game. They've got a lead at halftime. Let's go down and get the comments right now at courtside with Fred White and Larry Conley. Let's take a look at all the statistics here. At the end of the first half, both teams shooting around 42%, shooting well from the free throw line. North Carolina State with the edge in rebounds, which is a little unusual because Carolina is so tough on the boards, and they've hit five of 11 three-pointers. That's a big statistic, and North Carolina State doing an excellent job. After early, North Carolina getting a lot of second shots. We have somebody charting shots, and a telling statistic perhaps for North Carolina in favor of North Carolina is that nine of their 15 baskets have come in the lane area, right in there 10, 12 feet from the basket. NC State has only gotten five baskets in there, despite the fact that Thurl Bailey is four for four from the field. Once again, the shooting percentage is very close. Both teams uh, with more than 30 shots in the first half, and there is the scoring for State. Sidney Lowe with 19 points. He is very close to his career high, Jeff, which is 23. Having a great first half, but Thurl Bailey with three fouls. We've got to watch that because that's very important. North Carolina freshman Brad Doherty doing an excellent job inside and then balance scoring the rest of the way. Michael Jordan with two fouls. Watch that also. No one yet in double figures. And Carolina will have the basketball as we start the second half. It is 41-39, state by two. Perkins to Jordan, and Jordan lost it out of bounds. Did someone say to me at the half, Jeff, that the crowd really hasn't been in this game as much as you would expect? No, you haven't, and you know there's a lot of Wolfpack and Tar Heel fans here today, but wait for something explosive to happen, and all of a sudden, somebody's going to come alive. McQueen to Wittenberg. This is low. Nice pass to Lorenzo. Charles got so good at that move within five feet of the basket. And Charles has 10 points. He's such a man inside. He doesn't care if he's double teamed when he gets it that close. Good defense that time by Derek Wittenberg. Nice save by Kozel McQueen. Michael Jordan complaining it got hit on the arm. He normally isn't that short on his shots. Maybe he's right. Here comes State with the basketball and a four-point lead. Low under pressure from Braddock. Braddock would like to wear him down a little bit since Low was such an offensive factor in the first half. Bailey with a turnaround. Earl Bailey, five for five, pitching the that ball down low. He had perhaps his finest game yesterday, and he's carried over today. And he has 11 points, and State has now moved out to a six-point lead. Matt Doherty, great block by Bailey. Low ahead to Wittenberg, two on one. Charles. State is on a run, and they have an eight-point lead. And what presence of mind to Lorenzo Charles that time. Derek Wittenberg threw the pass too soon. Braddock had excellent position to draw the charge. Charles pulled up, calmly shot the little 10-foot jumper. Took his time to set himself. Jordan outside to Braddock. This is Perkins. Low to Jordan, shot won't go. Tip in by Brad Doherty. Michael Jordan using his left hand that time. Doherty there to tip it in on the missed shot. Brad Doherty with 11, and it's 47-41. State by six. McQueen left all alone at the free throw line. Wittenberg, three-point effort, good defense by Jordan, made him force it a little bit, and here come the Tar Heel. Doherty pulls it back up, Perkins. Nice place pass that time by Matt Doherty. North Carolina State, defensive breakdown that time. They don't want to let Perkins be that open in the lane area. Sam Perkins has nine. It looked like somebody opened a door and he was the only one who went through it. <laughs> Bailey looking for low back door, didn't get it. Lorenzo Charles had the rebound and I think he's been fouled by Brad Doherty. Lorenzo Charles went up for the rebound that time. He actually jumped into Doherty just a little bit, but that's what good rebounders do. They make a little contact on the way up. Doherty had to foul him. That's number one on Doherty. Cozell McQueen takes the long inbounds pass, now gives it to Wittenberg, and he'll run the offense from the right side. 17 minutes, 11 seconds to go. Great pass to McQueen, who banks it in with a jump hook. Nice little jump hook. North Carolina leaving McQueen alone. They didn't want to leave him that open, though. Excellent pass. Cozell McQueen has his first two points. This is Brad Doherty. 
Gets it to Perkins, and it's good, and he draws the foul. Carolina had two players in the paint that time with great position. Toughest thing to defend. Big guys passing to each other. Nice pass. Perkins one-on-one -on -one was fouled on the way up. He double-clutched it. He's got a chance for the three-point play. Foul was called on Lorenzo Charles, his second, and Thurl Bailey is probably thankful that they uh, got Lorenzo Charles because he then hit Sam Perkins. Yeah. They got Charles for the foul on the way up. Good thing for NC State. Three-point play completed by Perkins. It's 49 to 46. It's been a seesaw battle since we tipped it off here in the Omni. Game one of the semifinals of the ACC tournament. Wittenberg with Jordan on him. The fact that Wittenberg has two points, a lot of that credit has to go to Michael Jordan. Here's Wittenberg against four players inside and got the roll. That's a Derek Wittenberg move right in among the tall trees. Three players there. He buried it anyway. Jimmy Braddock can't get the three-pointer to drop. In and out on the long-range bomb. McQueen gives it to Lowe. Quickly ahead to Wittenberg. Lowe always seems to look for Wittenberg 40 feet down court. And more often than not, he finds it. Derek Wittenberg has a license to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's way out of his range. Thurl Bailey almost with the rebound, but Sam Perkins takes it out of his hand. The ball kicked high off the rim, otherwise Bailey was there for the offensive rebound. Jordan leans into one, got the basket, and he's fouled. And Jim Valvano takes the long walk to the end of the bench. As he's seen a nice sized lead start to deteriorate. Not a good sequence. Great pump fake by Michael Jordan. Gets fouled on the way up, hangs. Look at that concentration. And he's right there to get the rebound had it missed. There's number three on Lorenzo Charles and Jordan short on the three-pointer. Wittenberg snatches it out of the air. 15-51 to go in the ball game. State still by three over North Carolina, 51 to 48. When McQueen goes outside of 10 feet, they just leave him alone. Sidney Lowe, got it. What a move by Sidney Lowe. He has 21 points. You wouldn't think, you'd think he'd get more of those shots blocked, but the defense respects him so much, knowing that he'd like to pass first, that they don't come over and help out, and he lays it up there, getting some nice bounces today. State continues in that 2-3 zone. Jordan, three-pointer. 53-51, Michael Jordan now with eight points. Wittenberg against pressure, and he'll bring it up. Charles. Thurl Bailey. Sozell McQueen got a hand on it, but knocked it out of bounds. Out to Carolina. There's a timeout on the court with 14 minutes, 51 seconds left in the ball game. North Carolina State leading North Carolina 53 to 51. North Carolina State by two with 14.51 to go in the ball game. And Jeff, coaches adjust at halftime, tell their players to do different things. What have you seen out in the second half that we didn't see in the first? Well, I think uh, both teams' coaches had to be pleased with the way their team played the first half. Of course, Dean Smith would have liked to see a little more offense out of Jordan. And of course, Wittenberg did not have a good shooting half. But as far as execution, offense and defense, they've done an excellent job. There you see the comparison between what Jordan and Perkins have done over the season and what they've done today. You have to figure by the end of the game, they are going to be relatively close to their season averages, if not over them. Second half, North Carolina has hit five of nine field goals. North Carolina State, six of nine. Hot shooting, and we have a good ball game at 53 to 51. State by two over Carolina. Jordan to Braddock. Alley-oop for Perkins, missed the shot, follow, missed again. And Kozell McQueen with a rebound. How often will you see that? Great pass, Wittenberg. Great block by Jordan on Bailey. That was an excellent pass from Wittenberg. Bailey went up strong, but Michael Jordan was there to bother him, get his hand on the ball. Jordan to Doherty in the lane, stumbled. Got the ball off to Jordan. Jordan dumps it off to Perkins, missed the shot, and he's fouled. And Thurl Bailey really upset about the call. I think he's up doubly upset because he wanted a call at the other end of the floor. He didn't get it. Now Carolina, Sam Perkins will go to the line. 
That's three fouls on Kozell McQueen. Now that's one on Kozell McQueen. Three team fouls. Team foul, right. Of course, every time the whistle blows, Jim Valvano stands up and wants to see if the foul is on Thurl Bailey again because he's playing with three. Perkins at the free throw line. Maybe the best free throw shooting big man in all of college basketball. You know, most coaches jog with their team, run during practice. Jim Valvano gets his exercise on the sideline, <laughs> walking back and forth, pacing, pitching his pants. Perkins, the most valuable player a year ago in this tournament, hits two free throws, shoots more than 82% on the year. And we are tied again, this time at 53. Terry Gannon is into the ball game. Derek Wittenberg will get a breather. Sidney Lowe, who never comes out, runs the offense. McQueen to Gannon with Braddock on him. Jordan on low, looking for a screen from Thurl Bailey. Now they have a switch, and Perkins is on. Low couldn't get Jordan in the air, leads into one. Basket doesn't go, but they'll call Jordan for the free throw, and Michael holding his mouth as he gets up. That time, Sidney really couldn't turn the corner. He jumped in, made the contact. That's one of those that could have been called either way. Sidney got away with one perhaps that time. Michael Jordan went down very hard. Number three on Jordan, and you saw him checking to see if all the, uh, if all the pearlies are still there. You've got to give Sidney low credit here, too, because he knew his team needed a hoop. They used some clock on offense, but when it came time, he was going to make something happen. And of course, I always believe the closer you get to the basket, the more apt you are to draw fouls, the more apt you are to make things happen, and that's where he took the basketball. Low with 22 points. He could tie his career high with this one. He has hit five of five free throws today. State by one, 54-53. Sidney Lowe now has 23 points, matching the most points he has ever scored in a college basketball game. Dinky Proctor will check in to give Jim Valvano some power up front. He's 6'8", 220, a sophomore from Southampton, New York. Pretty good rebound. Doherty to Braddock with Gannon on him. Here's the steal by Lowe. Gannon picks it off. Lowe reached over Jordan's shoulder and knocked the ball away. And Sidney calls for the basketball. This is the kind of team they had in at the end of the half where they used a lot of clock on each possession. Sidney Lowe directing the show. He's going to the hoop again. Bounce the ball off. Proctor with a drive from the right side and scored. Dinky Proctor with his first two, and State is up by four. And look at the matchup. Sidney Lowe, barely six feet tall. Michael Jordan down low, trying to post him up. Braddock, here's a whistle away from the ball. And the foul is going to be on Proctor, Proctor rather, pushing Brad Darty. Interesting that they have gone to the man-to-man -man defense. Yes, it is. With the substitutes in, Jim Balvano probably wants him to be very physical now, although he doesn't want to get his team in foul trouble. They already have four team fouls. This is Braddock. Perkins. 57 to 55, Sam Perkins now with 16 points. Didn't play a second in yesterday's first round game. He's zeroed in on that little jump hook now. He's feeling, got good rhythm on it, got a good touch with it. Proctor to Gannon. Gannon all the way down the middle, fouled from behind. Braddock reached in and got him. It's a difficult thing to guard Gannon now. Take a look. Terry Gannon wanted to go to the hoop a la Sidney Lowe. He got in there. Braddock did the only thing he could, tried to knock the ball loose, but he got some risk with it. Everyone realizes what a great outside shooter he is. You have to respect that and play him tight. Even at 22, 23 feet, you play him tight enough, he'll go around you. A great shooter like Gannon, coaches say, hey, let's put this guy in drive. Make him go to the hoop. We don't want him measuring from the outside. Low to Gannon, fakes it. Pass underneath, tip out of bounds off North Carolina State to the Tar Heel. Pass was really rifled inside that time by Gannon. Thurl Bailey will come back in the ball game. Lorenzo Charles gets a breather. Carolina with the ball down by two. This is Steve Hale, the freshman from Jenks, Oklahoma. A pre-med major who was tri-player of the year last year in the state. Another third of that award went to Mark Price of Georgia Tech. NC State in a man-to-man -man trying to either post down Sam Perkins as they did that time or Michael Jordan on the other side of the floor. Perkins over McQueen.
between. We're tied at 57. 11.52 left to go. ACC semifinals. Low three-pointer. That one wouldn't go, but Proctor with a big rebound and back out to low. Working on Michael Jordan. Gets a screen for Bailey. Good switching defense by Carolina. Just very well schooled. It's great to see the big guys jump out the way Sam Perkins did that time. He actually made Sidney Lowe back up. McQueen trying to work the give and go, but they will not guard Cozell McQueen from 15 feet. So he'll shoot it and get it. That's the way to bring him out. Yes, it is. Cozell says, you're going to give it to me. I'm going to show you what I'll do with it. Put it in the basket. Four points for Cozell McQueen. 59-57, state by two. Jordan, three-pointer. Earl Bailey was right there with a hand up that had more trajectory than a normal Michael Jordan shot, but it went through anyway. Michael Jordan with 13 points, and really for the first time all day, you hear the crowd get back into the ball game. Carolina by one at 60 to 59. Gannon. Earl Bailey just saves the pass, and now Bailey forces one from long range, and Perkins with a rebound. McQueen reached in, knocked the ball out of his hand, but got him on the wrist. And this is going to get Lorenzo Charles back into the ball game. There's a timeout on the court. Only 10 minutes, 38 seconds left to go in this semifinal in the ACC. North Carolina 60, North Carolina State 59. 60 to 59, North Carolina over North Carolina State. Here's the last sequence, Jeff. They're trying to get the ball into Thurl Bailey down low. He's had a good afternoon offensively, but he's been quiet of late. Tough pass to handle. He really didn't have his body squared that time. Sam Perkins got the rebound, but he was fouled by Kozel McQueen. It's so important, particularly for a shooter like Thurl Bailey, to really turn and square up, get your feet planted. You don't have to do it slow and deliberately, but you do have to have good balance, and he did not that time. 10 minutes, 38 seconds to go. North Carolina, 60 to 59, one point over North Carolina State. There hasn't been much margin between either one of these teams all day long. They both hit five three-point shots, and Carolina's done a better job on that in the second half. Yes, Carolina's got two. NC State has yet to get a three-point basket in the second half. Brad Doherty outside. That's Matt Doherty. Braddock. Sam Perkins with the ball now. 18 points, eight rebounds. Not a bad afternoon for a guy who might not play today. Shot clock at seven. Matt Doherty bounces it up off the glass. Jordan tries to follow. Gannon steals from Jordan. Great inside steal from Terry Gannon because Michael Jordan had an easy basket inside. Not too many people will ever pick the pocket of Michael Jordan. This is low. Inside 10 minutes. Pressure pack ball game. NC State trying to keep his chances for an NCAA bit alive. Here's Cozell McQueen. That's the third time today they've given him a shot around 10 feet and the third time he's put it in. I'll bet you after the next time out, Dean Smith will say at least have a hand up, Matt, uh, Brad. That time he was standing, no hands up at all. Matt Doherty from the side, it won't go. Sidney Lowe with the rebound. State trying to run. Carolina back quickly on defense. Lowe forced back outside by Jordan. The Wolf back by one over the Tar Heels. Gannon with Braddock out on him, chest to chest at 27 feet away. Gannon trying to work for the shot. Lorenzo Charles, spinning move blocked by Brad Doherty. Then Braddock gets around Gannon. Two on two, now three on two. Braddock knocked away by Lowe, and Sidney caught him across the face. Hope Braddock's all right. Sidney Lowe tried first to draw the charge. You'll see Braddock change direction. He couldn't do it when Braddock brought the ball up. He really slapped it hard, and I think got Jimmy Braddock in the process. Got him in the eye, and you see uh, Braddock blinking his eyes. Jimmy's going to be all right. It's always a little scary to see something like that happen. 61-60, North Carolina State by one point. Braddock to Warren Martin, who's back into the ballgame. Nice lead pass inside, shot rejected. Here's the follow by Perkins. It's good, he's fouled. 
Good defense initially against Michael Jordan, but Perkins was right there. And that's how you get burned. Michael Jordan draws a crowd. Three state players around him. He gets the ball off. It doesn't go in, but nobody's there to screen Sam Perkins off the board. He gets the basket and a shift free throw. And the foul is on Thurl Bailey. That is number four. Thurl got the block on the first play, but he couldn't do any more. Sam Perkins got it back. That's a key foul on Thurl Bailey. Bailey. Still in the ballgame right now. He's got four personal fouls. We'll see what Jim Valvano will do. Perkins hits the free throw. And Thurl is going to have to come out of the game right now. Proctor will come back in. That's 21 points for Sam Perkins. Well, we were asking before the game what was going to happen with Sam Perkins' play. He has, and boy, has he ever. And has that statistic turned around. Yes. Perkins got off to a bad start. Thurl Bailey hit his first four shots, but he's made up for it in the second half. Bailey, of course, has been limited by foul problems. Had three in the first half, has just picked up his fourth. Gannon fakes, lost the ball, hustled, and got it back. This is low, guarded by Jordan. What a great matchup of athletes. Gannon, the behind-the-back dribble, leans into one and got it. Terry Gannon, known for his outside shooting, has gotten better and better at penetrating. Jimmy Braddock did just what the coach would say, put him in drive, made him hit a tough shot, but he made it. 63 all with 8.05 left in the game. Tough matchup inside for Terry Gannon, though, trying to stay with Michael Jordan down low. Jordan knows it, and he's in the lane trying to get the basketball. Gannon doing everything he can to front him so he doesn't get it. Here comes Low, three on two breaks. Sidney Low all the way to the baseline, then back out to Gannon. Proctor likes that power move inside, leans in, had the shot blocked inside by Perkins. Lorenzo Charles with a rebound, and we have Dinky Proctor down on the court, and he is holding that bandage left knee, and boy, you hate to see that. We'll check on Proctor when we come back. 7.36 left to go in the ball game. North Carolina State and Carolina tied at 63. Seven minutes, 30 seconds left to go in the ball game. 63-63, and Dinky Proctor is still down. Let's take a look if we can see what happened to him. Proctor had a bandage on that knee. He made a nice move inside, beat his man, but watch Sam Perkins come over to help up. Little, looks like he shuffled his feet there. Sam swatted the ball away, but as he came down, looked like he twisted the other ankle too, but he certainly twisted that knee, and he's been in pain on the sideline. This is the swarming defense of Carolina, but what, let's watch Proctor. He goes up. Comes down, the, the knee goes inside. He really put it, stretched probably the outside ligament because that knee really went in toward his other leg. They're helping Proctor off. They've taken the bandage off that knee, and Dinky Proctor helped to the North Carolina State sideline, gets a fine hand, and you can tell he's really hurt. Take a look, watch his knee bend to the inside when he comes down. First we'll watch the travel, <laughs> then we'll watch him come down and watch right here, stop it. Ooh. A lot of stress on that leg and that joint at that time. It is not supposed to bend that way. 7.36 to go, first half. They work on their second half, rather. They work on Proctor on the sideline. And we have a tie game at 63-63. Maybe the biggest thing that's going on right now is that Proctor was in the ball game to play up front because Thurl Bailey is on the bench with four personal fouls, and Jim Valvano is facing a decision. You've got 7.36 left to go. How long do you hold out an offensive and a defensive weapon like Thurl Bailey? And when do you send it back in and say, well, there's no tomorrow if he isn't in there? Well, this is what he's done. He's countered with Wittenberg, who will play forward and have to match up probably with Matt Doherty. However, with this lineup offensively, they're pretty explosive. They got Wittenberg at a forward position, can shoot it. Terry Gannon still in the game, and Sidney Lowe's having a good offensive game and still have Charles inside with Kozel McQueen. So basically, they're going with three fine outside shooters, Gannon, Wittenberg, and Lowe. This is Gannon trying to penetrate down the lane, in and out on the shot. Lorenzo Charles kept it alive. Brad Doherty saves it in the corner. 63 all. We're down to 7-13 from the Omni in Atlanta. Brad Doherty to Matt Doherty. Perkins all alone at the baseline. Brad Doherty with a follow. Missed the shot, but he drew the foul. That's the disadvantage of the small guard lineup. They don't have a whole lot of help on the boards. And North Carolina, the whole second half, has concentrated 
on either Sam Perkins or Michael Jordan down low. That time Sam got open for the little 15-footer. It wouldn't go. Foul on the way up. Doherty will shoot two free throws. And the only two people around Doherty, a 6'11 player, were two guards underneath. And there comes Thurl Bailey back in the ballgame. Terry Gannon will come out. And now that'll even up that front line a little. Seven minutes to go. I think this is the lineup that Jim Valvano wants on the floor. You know, North Carolina is very noted for their intricate offense, but their flexibility is also out. They have just tried to go inside this whole second half. Force it into Jordan, force it into Perkins, and of course, it's working, but they're in a dogfight this afternoon. Brad Doherty with one out of two gives North Carolina a 64 to 63 lead. Neither team has had much breathing room at all today. Derek Wittenberg, who hasn't scored very much, they've done excellent defensive work against him. Had only two points in the first half and really had very few shooting opportunities. Shot clock is down to two. Wittenberg three-pointer. Lorenzo Charles, and he's fouled, I believe, by Michael Jordan. That's the kind of basketball State wants to play. Sidney Lowe driving to the basket, punching it out to Wittenberg. That's the best look at the basket he's had all day. Watch Charles go up. He keeps it alive. Goes back up strong. Fouled by Doherty and maybe by Jordan. Who did they call? They'll call Jordan. And it's four fouls on Michael Jordan. Lorenzo Charles on the line for NC State. There's another angle. Michael Jordan comes out of nowhere. He'll come all the way across the lane. He's always around the basketball. That time he was called in the foul. Lorenzo Charles, five points, five out of five, make that five out of five out of the free throw line. 13 points on the afternoon, and he is tied it again, 64-64. And he puts North Carolina State back in the lead. So now there are two great players on the court playing with four fouls. Thurl Bailey for North Carolina State. Michael Jordan for North Carolina. And Carolina fans will remember that Michael Jordan fouled out the last game at Raleigh when NC State won. Braddock's three-pointer won't go. Thurl Bailey with a rebound. Asked for some help and throws it right to Sam Perkins. Perkins missed the shot. Bailey got the rebound and Perkins committed the foul. Boy, what a sequence that was. Not a good pass to start it. Sam Perkins alertly stole it. But he missed the shot. Watch this pass. Thurl Bailey a little. He didn't want to give it to McQueen, trying to get it to Sidney Lowe, the ball handler. Not a good pass, but he got it back. Foul on Sam Perkins. Then Perkins committed the air, commits his personal. See, Bailey and Charles with three. Carolina has only one player in trouble. That's Michael Jordan. You know, on that last sequence, fans may have noticed Michael Jordan tried to steal the pass from Thurl Bailey. Now, he's got four fouls. He shouldn't be reaching in, but that's the way he plays. That was a reflex action, and he's got to watch against that. Matt Darty called for the personal. That is the sixth team foul against Carolina, the third against Darty. Non-shooting foul. State will have the ball out of bounds. State has already committed seven personal. The next North Carolina foul will put both teams in the bonus situation. Derek Wittenberg, that would be for three. Charles with a rebound. He's pushed by Perkins, and he travels. The travel came before the push and the block. Derek Witten, another Wittenberg, another good look at the basket, but watch how his ball comes off so softly. Charles is there to get it, but he knows Perkins is there. In his anticipation, he travels. Wittenberg 0 for 7 on three-pointers today. And that won't happen very often, but it has happened this afternoon, and there's 5.22 left to go in this ball game. State on top, 65-64. Brad Darty to Matt Darty, now to Braddock. Charles trying to front Perkins so he doesn't get the ball. The shot clock at three. Got to get rid of the ball. Doherty just guns it toward the bucket. First time in the entire tournament, Carolina's been affected by that clock. Thurl Bailey banks it in, and what a pass. It went through a lot of North Carolina arms. Sidney Lowe threaded that pass, lofted it over two Carolina players, but behind one, and Thurl Bailey hit the shot. 4.57 to go in the semifinal. North Carolina State over North Carolina by three. This is the Raycom Jefferson Production Sports Network. Four fifty-seven left in the ball game. North Carolina State 67. North Carolina State 64. Earlier you saw Terry Holland watching the ball game. One of 17,000 plus jammed into the Omni. Of course, Terry has a vested interest 
he hopes in what happens in this one because he has to play Georgia Tech in the second game. Well, he certainly has an interest in watching this game and, of course, scouting for either team. And I don't think he'd be choosy with this two, this, these two teams because they are very equal. NC State playing excellent basketball. It would not be a day at the beach to meet either one of them <laughs> in the finals tomorrow afternoon at the Omni. 4.52 left to go. State by three over Carolina. 67 to 64. It has been all we had hoped it would. Michael Jordan to Braddock. State doing an excellent job on defense, and the shot clock is down to nine seconds. Last time, they didn't get off a good shot. Jordan turnaround jumper, short. Gannon back into the ball game, has the rebound, ahead to low. Big possession right here. We're down under four and a half minutes. NC State has to shoot this possession. There's uh, 18 seconds left on the shot clock, 19 for the four minute mark, so they'll have to shoot one more time. And then the shot clock goes off. Thurl Bailey, the bounce pass to Gannon. The shot clock at four. Great feed in the middle. They get it to Lorenzo Charles. Missed the shot. McQueen with a rebound, and he gets it back outside. And the shot clock is now off. We are at 3.57, and Jim Balvano leaps to his feet, calls out number four, and they have gone to their version of the four corners. As soon as he looked at the clock, I could see the word in his mouth. Motion, motion, trying to get the attention of his players. They're going to try and use some clock. And Gannon is fouled by Michael Jordan, and that will be number five on Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, again, reflex, trying to... Their feet locked. He didn't make contact, but in the process, Terry Gannon, Michael Jordan locked their legs. Jordan called for the foul, critical foul for North Carolina. Michael Jordan fouls out of the ball game, 13 points, three rebounds, well under what you would see, and here's how Dean Smith saw it. Curtis Hunter replacing Michael Jordan. Coach Smith is not going to show a whole lot of reaction. He's upset, of course, but that's one thing he's always maintained, his poise on the sideline. Another great coach acted very similar to that, John Wooden. About all he did was wrinkle that little program. <laughs> Coach Smith wrinkles his hands a Terry little bit, Gannon, but he's going to keep, keep his composure. Terry Gannon, a brilliant free throw shooter, goes to the line, puts it in. Gannon has missed only two free throws all year. He is 46 of 48, shooting over 96% right now. Second free throw, zips through the net, and it's 69-64. State by five with 340 left in the game. The shot clock is off. Darty to Curtis Hunter, who was in for Jordan. Matt Darty, nice feed to Brad Darty, blocked by Kozell McQueen. Now Paul McQueen for the foul, and he can't believe it. Looked like a pretty good block. He got it from behind. Matt Darty under control, makes an excellent pass. Brad Darty goes up, blocked from behind. We couldn't see Kozell's body blocked out to see if there was any contact down low, but Darty will go to the line. If he did get him, he got him with the body because it was a clean block with a hand, and Brad Darty goes to the free throw line. 12 points, four out of six from the charity stripe. He's had a couple of good ball games here in his first appearance in the ACC, and under a lot of pressure, dumps it right through. 69-65. The margin now four, 3.27 left. Dorty's free throw this time, no good. Thurl Bailey with a big rebound. Braddock tries to take it away, and they get it ahead to Gannon. Now do they go back to the four corners? They do. Like all of the state players on that sequence, I was looking for Sidney Lowe. I'm surprised he wasn't handling the ball. As soon as they could, they got it back to him. Carolina's double teamed him, but he got rid of it. Bailey, we're down to 3-0-2. Surprised that Wittenberg is not in the ball game right now? And here is a foul. Curtis Hunter tried to go for the steal and ran into Sidney Lowe. Here's Curtis Hunter trying to steal the basketball. He's got long arms, very quick. He couldn't stop his momentum. Lowe will go to the free throw line, and oh, those pressure free throws, so important. Sidney has tied his career high today, 23 points. If he hits these two, or one of the two, he'll break it. And he is six out of six from the free throw line. Hale comes into the ball game. Hunter will come out. 
Lowe is perfect from the free throw line. As a matter of fact, he's perfect from just about everywhere today. Sydney with that side saddle style, taking a good look at the rim and the Omni. 2.57 to go with the ball. Seven for seven and a career high 24 points. There's Valvano. Couldn't happen to a nicer kid either because Sidney Lowe is just as uh, just as pleasant a person and nice a human being as you could ever meet. He's a leader on the floor. He's a real gentleman and he plays the game like it's really should be. A lot of fun. Finally missed a shot. Seven out of eight, 24 points. It's state by five. 70 to 65 with 2.48 to go. Matt Darty to Hale. Matt Darty from long range three-pointer and North Carolina wants a timeout to talk about it as they have cut North Carolina State's lead from five to two at 70 to 68. 238 to go. Couldn't ask for much more, could you? Exciting basketball game. At the outset we said the players couldn't sleep well. I won't sleep well tonight. It's such an exciting game. Let's give credit to Matt Doherty though. Had an explosive offensive game yesterday. Today that was the first three-pointer I think in the second half for Matt and he didn't hesitate when he was open and of course his team needed a basket at that point. State up by two with 238 to go. They'll have the basketball. Now what uh, what is Jim Valvano's idea now? There's a lot of time left. 238 to go. Can you go to that spread and ignore the bucket? Well, I think he's going to go to the spread. I think he was probably more comfortable with the three or five point lead than he is with the two point lead. Now, the last time State had the ball offensively, as soon as Kozel McQueen touched the ball, Brad Doherty was running at him to foul him. He didn't get Get there in time and they ended up fouling Sidney Lowe. I would look for them to foul either Charles or Kozel McQueen if they don't steal the ball very quickly. Kozel McQueen of the starters, uh, the worst free throw shooter, 57.7 on the year. Lorenzo Charles, not a great free throw shooter, but he made the game winner yesterday against Wake Forest. Yes, I would think, I wouldn't be surprised. Derek Wittenberg looks like he's leaving the huddle. He'll be on the floor. They'll have three guards, three outstanding shooters. Thurl Bailey, a good free throw shooter. Lorenzo Charles was there under pressure yesterday and did the job. So they got a pretty good free throw shooting team on the floor. And Gannon is the best free throw shooter around. A lot of fans might not realize Gannon by far is the best free throw shooter in the conference, yet he isn't in the statistics or the standings because you have to shoot at least two and a half free throws in ACC contests. He is 47 of 49 on the year, so just from a sheer percentage viewpoint, Terry Gannon is the best free throw shooter going in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Low with the basketball, 2.27 to go. Picked up his dribble and they try to double team him, put the extra pressure on. Keep the ball in Sidney Lowe's hands or Gannon as much as possible. Low, that's Lorenzo Charles out to Gannon. We're down to two minutes and 13 seconds. And right away I think of Wake Forest yesterday against NC State. They killed the clock for, for over three minutes and then threw the ball away at the end, giving State an opportunity, which they took advantage of. Wittenberg almost lost it there, trying to get it to Gannon, and they do to Lorenzo Charles and back to Wittenberg. We're down to 155. The margin is only two points. Only two, and North Carolina's doing a good job defensively, getting a lot of hands on the basketball. Almost stole it that time, but North Carolina State will get the ball. Dean Smith getting very active on the sideline now. They are pushing North Carolina State closer and closer to that midcourt line. Lowe having trouble getting the ball in, and now Hale is going to be called for holding Gannon. And North Carolina State, which has hit 15 of 18 free throws, will send Gannon to the line on the one and one, and he'll have a chance to put in two more. You can see Dean Smith sort of roll his eyes saying, Hey guys, that's the last man we want to foul. Well, and there's Kozel McQueen back in, and you'll see both coaches now, depending on the situation, switch their lineups for offense and defense. Well, they want Kozel McQueen down at the other end of the floor for defensive reasons, but they'll get Derek Wittenberg in if they get the ball back. Terry Gannon, free throw. Missed it! Believe it or not, Terry Gannon missed the free throw, and Carolina has a chance to tie it up. 70-68, state by two, 136 left. Perkins. Carolina, you can believe, will work for a good shot. Hale guarded by Lowe. Carolina fighting for position inside. Doherty, Perkins, Pearl Bailey with four fouls. Has to be careful. 
You can follow the clock in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Doherty directing traffic. Gets it low to Perkins, and Sidney low knocked it away. They said he stepped on the baseline out of bounds. What a great try by Sidney Lowe. And Hank Nichols, the official, was right there to watch the ball bounce out of bounds. Sidney said, my foot didn't go out of bounds, but the ball landed on the line. We'll watch it here. Sidney comes all the way across the court. Great effort. I think his foot was he on did. the line, too, but the ball bounced out also. Dean Smith called a timeout. He wants to map his strategy. He'll have the ball when we come back. And there you see State with four left. Carolina is down to two. And the way this game has worked in the last few years, two timeouts with a minute 10 to go isn't many. No, it isn't. And you know, this is where the three-point shot really becomes strategy. You know, normally, your strategy would be box it in, clog it up, make them shoot the outside shot. Now you say, hey, I don't know if we want a wide open outside shot for a Jimmy Braddock or a Matt Doherty. So you got to come out and play defense, but yet you don't want North Carolina to get it inside where they're dangerous too. And you will recall a game we did earlier this year in Chapel Hill when Maryland went down to North Carolina, had a two point lead with about 30 seconds to go. And North Carolina beat them on a Jimmy Braddock three pointer. And that was the only shot they were really looking for. Jimmy Braddock will take that shot from the top of the key. And here is that little mystique. ACC fans at other schools think, boy, is North Carolina lucky. Now, you know, I have to think you make your own break. But anyway, there is that feeling. NC State this year feels like finally the breaks are starting to go their way in the close games, a la Wake Forest yesterday. So both these teams feel charmed, but I think State is going to call another timeout here. They want to speak to their team a little longer. Dean Smith calls his players back to the bench. It is a mystique surrounding a team like a North Carolina in this conference or a UCLA out in the Pac-10. Teams that have had the great tradition who have won for years. But then North Carolina State, their fans can certainly remember the glory years when David Thompson was there, when they won as many big games as anybody. But that is the kind of thing that relates to fans and athletic directors and alumni, but it doesn't necessarily relate to players because none of these guys went through that. No, and don't forget, you have to do it out here on this 94 feet. All the thinking of the fan, all the emotion, it's done on the court. But I will say this, State is a smarter team this year. They tend to take advantage of opportunities better than they have in the past few years. Now that's from last year's all-tournament team. Only two players missing, Worthy and Helms. Sampson, Perkins, and Jordan are back. And here's the second team. Six of the top ten are back. You wouldn't want to bet uh, those six guys that end up in the first ten again, would you? And, you no, know, and you know, we, we got to mention, four eight, all ACC performers are on the floor right here in this game. Although Michael Jordan has fouled out, Jordan Perkins, Thurl Bailey, Sidney Lowe. State has Lowe and Bailey in there. Derek Wittenberg still on the bench. Kozell McQueen in for defensive purposes. And Bailey is working with four personal fouls. He has played most of the second half that way. Jordan has already fouled out for North Carolina. Sam Perkins starting out high on this lineup. There's, they were trying, trying to spring for the alley-oop. The alley-oop out of bounds. They gave a back pick to Kozell McQueen, but he wasn't open. McQueen did a good job fighting his way around that pick so that they could not get the alley-oop into Perkins. This is Doherty. We're under a minute. State by two over Carolina. Hale. Perkins, Brad Doherty tips it in, and we're tied at 70. How many offensive rebounds has he had today? And that's an example. The great player gets the ball inside. State comes over to help out. Brad Doherty goes to the board, works hard, gets position, tips it in. We've got a tie ball game, and Jim Balvano wants a timeout. And he gets it with 29 seconds left. It was interesting there, I thought, Jeff, that North Carolina did this time down court, tied at 70, did not come out nearly aggressively, nearly as aggressively on defense. Here, let's take a look at the last shot. There's Sam Perkins. Look at all the help he was, State was trying to give him. Doherty got inside Thurl Bailey. Remember, Bailey has four fouls. Did it? Had he not, he might have pushed and tried to get Doherty out of there. 15 points, 10 rebounds for Brad Doherty, one of his finest games at a key time. It's a heck of a freshman performance. Now what do you do as Dean Smith? Last time down, the defense was very, very aggressive, double teaming the ball at every opportunity. But now you're tied with 29 seconds left. Do you gamble and sit back, or do you gamble the other way and go out? It's a gamble either way. 
Yes, it is. North Carolina, of course, I think will keep pressure on. Uh, they can't afford to give up any good shot. They're going to try and create a turnover. That is their style. They're going to stay after and put pressure on, I believe. Now, Sam Perkins, of course, is their shot blocker. They're going to want him protecting the basketball. I wouldn't be surprised if they put him on Kozel McQueen so that they can drop off in zone. NC State will counter with their best offensive players, I'm sure, Derek Wittenberg, Sidney Lowe, Terry Gannon, Thurl Bailey, and probably Lorenzo Charles on the offensive end. Would you expect North Carolina State to try to go with the outside shot considering uh, they've got Gannon coming back on the court, Wittenberg a great long-range shooter, and Lowe has become a great long-range shooter. Can you stay away from the teeth of that Carolina defense? I think when the coach, your coach at this time, you say, guys, we got to use some clock, protect the basketball. There's plenty of time. Don't rush a shot. I don't care if it's a 20-footer or a 15-footer or a layup. Make sure it's a good shot. Wittenberg to low. We're down to 23 seconds. You can see the clock in the lower part of your screen. That's Gannon. Double team had to pick up his dribble, gets it to Wittenberg. Derek Wittenberg did not do a smart thing that time, brought two defenders over, tried it to interchange. You don't want to cross. Inside 10. Here comes Lowe working man to man on Braddock. They cleared the lane. The shot is blocked. Here comes Hunter. Two seconds. Signals for a timeout, and they stop the clock with two seconds left. And Sidney Lowe goes down to the floor and put his hands between his head between his hands and was very disappointed. How many times this afternoon have we seen Sidney Lowe get into the middle? He goes up between two guys, just didn't stay with the basketball. North Carolina had a lot of hands around it. No foul. He wanted it. Of course, there's a frustration, a lot of emotion there at the end. Jim Valvano goes back to his bench, Pat Sidney Lowe. And now Carolina, with two seconds left, will have to move the ball about 60 feet up court to get to the bucket. Last night, Jeff, we saw Georgia Tech and Maryland. Maryland threw the ball about 75 feet, almost put it in the basket as a tip at the buzzer. Yes, they did. And North Carolina may try that today. However, NC State has a tall team they can put on the floor, Thurl Bailey and Kozel McQueen. I think they're going to try and advance the ball as quick as they can. First guy, the first guy that gets it, got to look at the basket. And of course, it'll chances are it'll be a three-point attempt. But that doesn't really matter at this point. 70-70, two seconds left to go in this ball game. This is the rubber match. They have split the home and home season series on the year. State trying to get even for losing in the uh, semifinals last year to this club. I think NC State will have to put a man, and probably a bigger man, on the ball out of bounds. Don't let Carolina thread the needle with the pass. Make them throw it up in the air. Then Jim Valvano's got to say, hey, guys, no fouls. Earlier today, we saw Curtis Hunter try and make a steal and fell on Sidney Lowe. This time, you can't afford that kind of action this time. You cannot afford any contact, anything that would send somebody to the free throw line. Two seconds left for the team with the ball. Almost no time for the team without it in eternity. Jimmy Braddock, Steve Hale, of course, Sam Perkins. It looks like Doherty Matt is the Doherty trigger is gonna, man. He's going to throw the ball in. And they've got Kozell McQueen on him, the tallest player. McQueen being told where he can stand. Jim Valvano says, put your hands up. Make him throw it high. Matt Doherty, a smile on his face, I think, having some words with the state bench. Down the sideline, Perkins from 28 feet. Oh, boy. He got a great look at the basket. Did you see Sam measure that shot? That is not out of his range. It did a little banging around inside the cylinder. Let's Watch take a this. look at it. Nice pass from Matt Doherty. He rifled it. That's what State didn't want. Watch Perkins stay with it. It was in the <laughs> cylinder. Didn't About miss four by inches much, of that it? ball got down in there, but it didn't stay. So we'll go to overtime. The second overtime of this tournament. Watch it from another angle. Oh, that was a great pass from Doherty. Watch Sam, concentration. Brad Doherty under the basket, trying to get position, but of course, time had expired. You can't ask for a much better shot at the basket, a much better pass, and it just wouldn't go. But oh Carolina's got a new lease on life. They were down five points a few minutes ago. 
on his right, an excellent recruiter, a guy that did a great job recruiting Del Curry and Bob Beecher for uh, Charlie Moyer's club, Virginia Tech. And we will be naming a Vidalis MVP. Let's say right now we have co-winners in Perkins and Lowe. I would say whoever wins the game, that player will get it because Perkins and Lowe have definitely been the stars here. North Carolina controls, we're in overtime. Four minutes, 55 seconds. Shot clock is on, but it'll only be on for a few seconds. Man to man, they're communicating on defense, switching on the screens inside. Matt Doherty to Perkins. Back to Matt Doherty at the top of the circle. Pass is knocked away. It was not a good pass. He tried to force it. Perkins from three points. Won't go. Follow shot is good. And there's Doherty. His ever-present present body in the right position. Good awareness on the floor. His junior year, he's going to really, I think, put it together to be a dominating inside player. He has 17 points this afternoon. We have four minutes and 15 seconds left in overtime. Low shot is blocked by Doherty. And Score the basket. Score the basket. basket. He got that definitely on its downward flight. Tom Frame was right on that call. Good backdoor cut. There's the entry by Gannon to the post. Bailey with the backdoor cut. There's the jumper. There's Doherty coming over. You can't see it from that angle, but he definitely got that on its downward flight. 72-72. Sidney Lowe has 26 points, and that is a career high for him. 4.05 left in overtime. How about Sam Perkins, who hasn't played in a week? There's some nervous people right now down in Raleigh and down at Chapel Hill. I know my friend Herbie Jacobs at the Holiday Inn down at Chapel Hill is sweating it out. It goes! He feels a lot better right there. I know he's jumping out of the seat as Valvano begins to sweat. The perspiration comes down his back. Yes, Sam Perkins. Oh, how nice it's to have an All-American. How sweet it is with the left-handed bank jumper. And Joe Forty waves it down and says, count it. 23 points for Sam Perkins. 74-72. Sam with a chance to increase the lead to three. Both ask. McQueen and Bailey now have four personal fouls. John, I'm going to ask you, Sam Perkins, look healthy to you? Looks pretty good to me. I tell you, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with him right now. Well, he can play for anybody. 3.45 to play in overtime. Three-point Carolina lead. Anytime, any place. Cozell McQueen to Gannon. And Jim Valvano is going to take a timeout. Well, let's talk about Brad Doherty a little bit. He has 17 points. His career high is 18. He has 11 rebounds. That is very close to his career high. He has put together some kind of game as he winds up his freshman year at North Carolina. Timeout situation is this. State with two. Carolina with two. Remember, no clock in effect. It goes in effect for the first uh, minute in the uh, overtime. And after that, it is out of it. So right now, we have no clock. There's Terry Holland right now, and he looks relaxed, calm, cool. A young man in front of him is Billy Pack, his son. He goes to Clemson University. He's working down here. Well, he can look calm. He's not in overtime. That's right. His team won by 43 points last night. Wittenberg with it. I'll tell you this, don't underestimate though. Duke University and Mike krzyzewski has got a program in the right direction with all their great young kids. Lowe gets the baseline, then dishes off. Back to Bailey. Man-to-man -man defense right here. Bailey. Bailey will take it up. Perkins blocks it, gets it back. Okay, Perkins just right now is showing you why he's a class school American player. Does it on the offensive end with the great three-point play. Comes back on a defensive end with the shot block. The kid is doing it all. Now they will spread it out. Carolina leading by three. Less than three minutes left in overtime. Wittenberg trying to foul and finally does. You know, when they had Phil Ford, John, I had the opportunity to play against him. Look, Alvano right now is furious. I mean, he's got it all going now. Now comes the, he is really furious. He's demonstrating that nice, calm Italian temper right there. Well, let's Look see at, what he's upset about. That Bailey right there with a little head fake, and Perkins gets all ball right there. He went arms. back up and retrieved it also. He's 6'9", but he's really like 7 feet with the length of those arms. Pat Doherty has only one basket in was, this half, a three-pointer. John, I was saying earlier that when he had Phil Ford playing at that four-corner attack in the middle, we played against them when I had one of my great teams with John Long, Terry Tyler, and Terry Durot, and they came in with Klipchak and Lagarde and Walter Davis. Once they get the lead and it's like eight minutes to go, I was ready to wave the white handkerchief because <laughs> you couldn't beat them in that fourth quarter. 
two from the line for Matt Doherty. 12 in the game. And now it's a five point Carolina lead. Wittenberg checks in, McQueen goes out. Remember this, they can get back in the game really quick with the three point play, especially Wittenberg and Gannon. And Wittenberg is really overdue. He's had such a poor night shooting the three point attempt, and he's a great shooter. Still two minutes and 54 seconds left. Little question about Wittenberg. Did he check in or did he not check in? Who's in the ball game? That's the question. George McLean, number 12, is up. Wittenberg is standing over there at the scores table. Dean Smith is trying to direct traffic, straighten it all out. <laughs> I think Dean might be stating that they already handed the ball, already handed the ball to Sidney Lowe at the time that he was whistled in. McLean is in the lineup, number 12, a freshman from Rocky Mountain. Five point lead for Carolina, 254 to play in overtime. McLean had spinal meningitis uh, this year, and that really hurt his freshman season. He came from Rocky Mountain High School. That's the same high school that produced Phil Ford and, as I said earlier, Buck Williams, the great power forward from New Jersey Nets. McLean with it. Two minutes, 43 seconds to play in overtime. Here's Charles. He's fouled. Perkins will pick up the personal foul. Sam, number three on him. We take a look at the entry right down inside to Charles right here. I don't know. I didn't. He didn't get much. Did I, he? I didn't see any foul right there, but I'm sure he got his hand in because he didn't object to the call at all. Look at Jimmy. He's going to cheer him on. He won't allow him to quit. He will not allow his kids to quit. The guy is a fighter. Charles has hit six in a row today. He has 14 points. His career high is 15, so he could go over that right now. Also get his team back within a three-point field goal, and it does not fall. Brad Doherty is immediately fouled by Gannon. You know, he's leading the cheers on the sideline. It's really beautiful to see is the All-American Michael Jordan because he knows that he, you know, didn't perform to his kind of ability. And when you have that great talent and that great ability, people expect to see it all the time. And I guess that's what makes it so tough for players like Ralph Sampson and Michael Jordan. People expect to see greatness every time. And it's just not going to happen. McQueen back in the lineup as Doherty goes to the line. This young man has played very, very well today. Missed the foul shot. Perkins touched it last. State will have it with two minutes, 36 seconds left in overtime. There's plenty Carolina of time. leading by five. Plenty of time, John. And they got to really right now try to get a screen. They got to get a screen for Terry Gannon and get him to shoot that three-point attempt. And Wittenberg's on the floor who definitely is a three-point shooter. And you also have Sidney Lowe, who has the basketball right now. Sidney with 26 points. Down low, Charles lays it in. Remember this now, one three-point play away from a tie ball game here. Doherty is fouled by Wittenberg. That's three on Derek. Here it is. There's Matt Darty taking the ball, going up the sideline. There's Wittenberg reaching in. It's a great tackle right there. USFL football. Herschel Walker gets blasted. To the line is Doherty. He's three for three today. He's a good clutch free throw shooter. Made two big ones with three seconds to go to beat Wake Forest earlier in the year. And that started the demise of Wake Forest because at that time they were like 13 and two. He has 13 points in the game. Trying to stretch that lead back to five, does. Five in a row from him at the foul line. 79, 74, now they double team in backcourt. Lowe brings it up with two minutes and 16 seconds to play. McQueen is fouled by Doherty. I can't understand those fouls right there to stop the clock. I just don't understand reaching in and fouling unnecessarily rather than letting him run some time down. All, right, all you want to do in that situation is keep the pressure on him, keep him away from the basket, right? And there's no doubt about the foul right there. He's 30 feet from the basket and he cracks him. Now I know he's not really a good free throw shooter. It might turn out to be a plus because Kozell's only shooting 57% for the year. Missed it badly. And then commits a foul. 
from McQueen is gone. Cozell will leave. And that leaves Jim Valvano scratching his head. Well, he's a little perplexed right now. Had this game right in their grasp, and it's starting to get away, especially when Jordan went out of the game. They had a really think victory. That's Cozell McQueen. He's a sophomore. I really believe he's getting better with each game in terms of his agility on the floor. He's got to work on a program, jump rope, weight program, a little touch program, getting a basketball and shooting with a little touch all summer. And I really think he's going to be an improved, improved player for Valvano next year. Dean Smith, the balance of his team. He won yesterday. Perkins did not play at all. Michael Jordan has been in foul trouble, did not score much in the first half. And they're trying to win again today. Well, you know, there's so many great high school players in the state of North Carolina, and his tradition goes on and on. Right now, there are three juniors. I'm going to throw some names at you. Ranzino Smith out of Chapel Hill, a great guard. Danny Manning, 6'11", an unbelievable talent. And another kid by the name of Chris Washburn at Fork Union Military Academy, who's 6'11", and he's from North Carolina. And they tell me that Carolina is going to be in a hunt for all three. Misses the second. That's his first miss of the afternoon. Six-point lead. Now, remember, that's only two three-point shots with still two minutes and seven seconds left in the game. Yes! Right there! The foul is on Matt Doherty. He picks up his fourth. 2.05 to play. Still plenty of time, Dick. You know how long it takes for two minutes here? If State makes these free throws, they're going to really cause Dean to have a little concern right here. There's the hook by Doherty. Wittenberg will go to the foul line, his first chance of the afternoon. Derek has only four points in the game. He had a tough night out here today. He's a much better performer and player than what we saw on the floor right here, Derek Wittenberg. He made an amazing comeback, too, though, for a kid that had that uh, stress fracture. He came back so quick, had so much guts to want to come back and play. Four point lead for Carolina. Hunter breaks the press and is fouled. He's grabbed by Charles and they'll give him two shots. Oh, that's got to be deliberate. In fact, I really believe to take the officials off the hook, I'd like to see the last four minutes of a game and it'll eliminate fouling all over the place. All fouls are two-shot fouls. Not a bad idea. Two minutes exactly remaining in overtime. North Carolina leading state 80 to 76. A lot of pressure right now on a freshman, Curtis Hunter. There he is. He gets tackled from behind. And that would have been a great football play, but unfortunately, this is round ball. Hunter, who had 10 yesterday, in an easy victory 90. over Clemson, does not have a point today. 94% of that free throw line, that's not bad shooting. Now, I know he hasn't had a lot of attempts. Stretching the lead back to five, looking for six. He was out quite a long time with a stress fracture also. Missed about six to seven weeks of action. Curtis did in his freshman year. He came back just as Buzz Peterson went down, and he came back just in time. Six-point lead for the Tar Heels. The Wolfpack with less than two. Low, too hard. Gannon goes for the rebound. He's fouled by Perkins. Perkins with four. Well, he converts these two. We got a four-point game again. There's the jumper right there by Low, and here comes Gannon for the rebound. And there's Perkins right over his back. He says, what is this little guy <laughs> doing under me? I have no idea he's supposed to be here. Checking in once again is George McClain. Sidney you know, Lowe will sit down. I'm going to make our producer, John Wilhack, really happy. He loves Syracuse since she's a Syracuse graduate. But Sam Perkins, as we look at Lowe right there, Sam Perkins came very close to going to Syracuse, as did Sidney Green. If they would have gotten one of those two to go with their great trio in terms of Brun, Red Brun, and Eric Sanifer, and uh, Leo Routens, Jimmy Beheim's club right now would be a real threat for the NCAA. Gannon hits both. He has nine in the game. Pressure from State. They're down by four. Raddick into forecourt quickly. They try to team him up back there. Can't do it. Gannon fouls Hunter. Still a minute 43 to play. We'll be here for a while. Well, that'll be a one-on-one, but basically there's no doubt that's a deliberate foul right there, and that's the fouls I'm talking about in the last four minutes of a game. I think they should all be two-shot fouls, take the pressure off the official in determining whether or not it's deliberate. Hunter, two for two today. There's only two points in the ball game. A freshman at the line. In and out. State has it. 
Here comes McLean pushing it up. Wittenberg hits a three-pointer. Well, I'll tell you, he found the rhythm right there, and he finally converts one. Couldn't get a bigger one. The basket counts. The timeout is charged to North Carolina State. 82-81. Don't leave us. A minute 31 to go. We'll be back to the Omni in Atlanta. Dick Vitale said it. No lead is safe in the ACC with the three-point rule. North Carolina by one over North Carolina State. Wittenberg from downtown. He has only nine points in the game, but he has come through here with a big three-pointer. Well, you know, I got the feeling that the North Carolina kids in the last two and a half minutes, once they got that five or six-point lead, it looked to me like they thought it was, you know, all over, that the game has been finished, completed, and they don't seem to have that same rhythm that they demonstrated to get that lead. Somehow they got to find that kind of flow and that kind of tempo, and I look for Sam Perkins to have to really take charge again as he's done down the stretch so many times. Keep in mind, as Dean Smith looks on, that Perkins has four fouls, so does Matt Doherty. Perkins will get the basketball. The Braddock, a minute and 30 seconds left. Remember, no clock again. We keep repeating that. The clock is turned off now to 30-second clock. Braddock running the offense. Fouled from behind by Gannon. Gannon going for the steal, almost had it. And their staff is hilarious right there. You know, you have a little... Here we take a look at it right here. There's Jimmy Braddock. There's Gannon from behind. As soon as you put that hand there, John, I mean, you've been around basketball a number of years. You know the whistle's going to be blown. Nine times out of ten, you're right. But Braddock will go to the line. Excellent foul shooter, almost 86%. This is his first chance today. He See has that? not scored in the second half nor the overtime. See, now if you were locked in that little gym years ago, and he misses a big free throw right here. Here comes Derek Wittenberg with a minute and 15 seconds. He calls time. A minute 16 to play. I was going to say right there, John, if you were locked in a gym, in terms of you didn't have the visibility that you have right now and the exposure, these officials make the call right now. We will be back with more overtime. A couple of big misses by Dean Smith's team at the foul line, one by Jimmy Braddock, another by Matt Doherty, have kept Jim Valvano and the Wolf back in this one. Three-pointer from Derek Wittenberg, and now State with a minute, 15, minute 16 to play, has the ball and a chance to win it all. Well, you know, that's what makes this game so absolutely crazy from a coaching standpoint. Braddock's an 84% shooter, and if Dean Smith could pick a kid he'd like to shoot the free throw, he probably would pick Braddock. Bailey to low. Let's we'll see if they take a little time off. They'll spread out the clock floor and use some clock, play for the high percentage shot right now. They can't afford to have a bad shot. You can see the time counting down one minute. Wittenberg along the baseline, reverses and scores. Well, Wittenberg just blew by the defense right there. Hale was no match for him as he took it right to the goal and laid it up. Steve Hale came off the bench. He is a freshman against a senior. That wouldn't happen next year or the year after, but right now he... Perkins off the board. Won't fall. Follow no good. State has a rebound. And then a foul by Perkins, and I believe he's gone. He is gone. The tide has turned, Mr. Sanders. 37 seconds left. North Carolina State leading by one and here it is there's Perkins getting good position inside except he has a bad angle on the shot so he lays it off the glass hard and then there's the reach in and there's no doubt about it and there's a young man that played a, quite a game here today he has fouled out with 24 points seven consecutive points here Look at this drive by Wittenberg. He just leaves Braddock, Doherty, Hale. Nobody comes over, and he's got an unmolested layup. And I'll tell you, Wittenberg down the stretch, the big three-pointer, then the drive. He redeemed himself from a very poor basketball game and now has become one of the stars of stars. North Carolina State now. They're jumping with joy right now in Raleigh, North Carolina. You better believe that. They were down by six in overtime. They've scored eight, nine in a row. 
Well, you know, when you miss three front ends of one of ones, Hunter did, Brad Doherty, and Radock, that makes it kind of tough to get a victory, and that's really not simple. Simple. I'm not going to use that word, <laughs> but that really is not basketball by Dean Smith's club. They shoot 74 percent. Hunter shot goes. It's a one-point ball game again. Timeout, Carolina. Hunter gets it to fall, and they finally break the string. North Carolina and Dean Smith are up 82-76. It's now 85-76. Nine straight points in overtime by North Carolina State. The main reason is the missed one and ones on the front end. Well, that wins and loses games so many times, and North Carolina in Dean Smith's career has won so many basketball games by effective free throw shooting. What really makes it tough right now, and North Carolina needs a miracle. They have their two blue chippers, two thoroughbreds. Rolls Royce is sitting on the sideline as assistant coaches in Sam Perkins and uh, Michael Jordan. She's cheering her heart out, heart out Sam. I tell you, if she's cheering for her man Sam Perkins, but he's not on the floor, John Sanders. Neither is Michael Jordan. The two All-Americans are gone. Let's watch Derek Wittenberg. This is an All-American play here. Well, there's Wittenberg. He just goes by three defensive players. They all stand and applaud and cheer and watch and say, wow, look at this. And Dean says, hey, are you guys photographers taking pictures? Let's play defense. State is out of timeouts. Dean Smith with one remaining. Sam Perkins stands behind. Nothing more he can do except cheer. Michael Jordan is also fouled out. State trying to reach the finals of the ACC tournament. There's Michael against the winner of the game to follow. Stay right where you are because we have Georgia Tech and Virginia coming up. State by one with 20 seconds to play. I tell you, this is worse than coaching sometimes on the sideline here. I'm emotionally drained just doing a game here, John, for two hours and change, and I know you're sweating it out because you've got a flight. Well, you've got to get it pumped up for game number two also, Dick. Well, Jim Simpson will get me pumped up, the pro that he is, the class performer. I know he will not allow me to get down. And you know I'll never get down when it's basketball. Hale commits the foul. One second went off the clock. They're face guarding right here. There's the inbounds, and he hooks Wittenberg. That will bring Brad Doherty back into the lineup. Cecil Exum sits down. Wittenberg goes to the line. He has hit five in a row at the foul line. He has 13 points in the game. He's been the key in overtime. Well, there's no question he's been the key there, and he's also locking up a nice bid for the NCAA tournament right now for North Carolina State. He's got it. Nothing but net five in a row. Well, you know, that committee meets tomorrow, headed by Dave Gavitt, the commissioner in a big East Conference, along with Vic Bubis and David Hart. One thing about those gentlemen, I'll guarantee you this, they'll have some people complain down the stretch, as there will be every year, but they'll do an honest job and an objective job. 15 seconds, three-pointer. Braddock, no good. Follow. Bailey has it for State. Well, there's victory right now. Raleigh, North Carolina. The clock has been stopped in backcourt. Valvano wants to know why. Foul on Steve Hale. No, look at Jimmy Valvano. He's, he's going absolutely bananas. He smells that victory. He knows it. Get the mustard out. Get the Hollywood. Come on, Jimmy. There's the jumper by Braddock shooting the three-point attempt. It's off the iron. And there's, there's the foul. foul. Yep, there's the foul. You could hardly hear it. They have put 10 seconds on the clock now. I know Jimmy Valvano's Papa Rocco, a well-known official for many years in collegiate basketball, is watching in New York. Look at Valvano right now. I tell you, he's a sight to behold. Ten seconds left. There's our Vitalis MVP. It was low in his outstanding play. We'll give an honorable mention to Derek Wittenberg for his performance in the overtime today. Well, I tell you, you got to give a real honorable Mention uh, performance to the entire North Carolina State team for having the guts to come back and win this, but I agree with you. Sidney Lowe was the star. He set the stage in the first half. Steve Hale. Oh. Bailey, foul. Three oh, yeah. seconds left. Matt Doherty is fouled out, and this place is Bedlam. Look at the love there. Look at the joy, the jubilation of collegiate basketball. 
Look at Valvano now raising a fist to the crowd. Arte will have all the adjectives flowing. He's going to have all these writers talking to himself as he'll be using his choice New York Stengelis. Tim Valvano, for the second straight time, is going to beat Dean Smith. North Carolina State coming home a winner, two out of three against the Tar Heels this year. Well, that gives him a little respect down there in Tobacco Road down in North Carolina. A lot of people gave up on that team at midseason when Wittenberg went out. They said, that's it. But they have hung tough. Well, if they had Wittenberg all season long, they would have posted 23 victories at least this year. Dean Smith will lose for the seventh time this season. But he will not be through, even though that's the end of his ACC tournament time. Clock will wind down now. It is over. North Carolina State has defeated North Carolina. There's a happy Jimmy Bavano, and the dream party that everybody was dreaming about for tomorrow has been ruined. It'll be the winner of Virginia and Georgia Tech against North Carolina State. Sidney Lowe, our MVP, he had 26 points. Derek Wittenberg, the hero in overtime with 15. Michael Jordan fouled out with 13. Brad Doherty had 17. Sam Perkins with 20.